there is a concept in the church today, in, 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 in churchianity, let me call it that, in the religious world, that sounds very spiritual. It sounds very godly. Um, it sounds very honoring and respectful to God, but it's absolutely disastrous. Um, it is a very destructive uh, and terrible foundation on which a lot of beliefs in the church are built. And this is this concept of um, God is in control. Now, that terminology comes through in different ways. Where it's often it's spoken about the sovereignty of God uh, and God is in control. But, and, and most Christians, when they, when they use that phrase, oh, God is in control, um, they mean very well. They, they're, they, they, they're trying to console a loved one or they're trying to console a friend who has, has lost a, somebody perhaps. And they said, you know, oh, don't worry, God is in control. Uh, and it's meant to, 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 give, you, to give the person solace. Um, and I believe that it's, it's good in the sense that, that you feel, well, listen, ultimately, God is the supreme being. And that is true. God is the only God. We see that in Scripture. There is no other God besides Him. There is no other God. <laughs> That's just it. Even Satan and his angels are just angels. They were created beings. But there is no other God. So here, when we're talking about this topic, please understand from the get-go that we're not addressing the supremacy of God. That is un untouchable. God is absolutely supreme. There is no greater power in heaven and on earth. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Um, so, so, but, but here is where this concept becomes disastrous. Uh, it becomes disastrous because the connotation that often is left with many people um, and hurts them tremendously is that God is literally controlling their lives. That a God is the one who controlled, he's sort of the images, he's at a big sort of a board, in fact, and he can control the cars and the seasons and, the, and, he, and, he, and he is manipulating every situation uh, to, to his own ends. And, and the term sovereignty then in that sense is very wrong because it's like, well, God can just change his mind and, 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 and whatever. He can decide to do this and then change his mind and do this because, well, he's sovereign. And, and so that, that concept does not line up with Scripture. Scripture is very clear. Uh, um, and, and, and so it's very important, again, that we, we use Scripture. We use the Word of God as our foundation when we look at that. Because, again, I, I can't tell you how many people I've run across in the world, worldwide, that, where people have thrown out God, that they reject God because they say, well, if you say God is in control, then why did he cause the mudslide in the Philippines and the earthquake over here or, or the, the tsunami in Japan and all these innocent people that were, that were destroyed? That's an exactly, that's a very good question. You see, that those are not sent by God. God is not in control of the world as we know it. And I know that if you're a religious person or you grew up in church, that will be a startling statement. You've already shut it out, down. You'll shut me off and say, oh, well, I'm not going to listen to this geek word. This is this guy. But I challenge you, listen to God's word and let's delve into this a little bit. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it says this. It says, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So right from the beginning, we see God gives dominion and authority to man. In Psalm 115 verse 16, it says this, the heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Psalm 8, 4 to 6. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings. That word there in the original, as many of you know, is you've made him a little lower than Elohim. You have made him a little lower than God himself, and crowned him with glory and honor. Listen to verse 6. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Now that's very important. 
understand that God has given the earth to man. Given. It is a given thing. God hasn't retained it. He has given it to men. Now, that is a key factor. Now, understand too that God has given men a free will, an absolute free will. Man gets to decide. Now, God's will was clearly portrayed. We see God's will in Eden and we see it in the heavens to come. We see God made Eden, God created man. Man had everything. Adam had everything that he needed in in this garden, um, and and there was he, sh- he he lacked for absolutely nothing. There was no sickness. There was no pain. There there, it was just the Garden of Eden. That was God's will for mankind. But God, um, in His love for people, God gave us a free will. A free will. Now we see that because without a free will, love cannot exist. Now. You know John 3.16, no doubt. John 3.16, the famous verse, For God so loved that He gave. God's nature and His very DNA is love, if you will. He is love, it tells us in 1 John chapter 4. We see love in Ephesians chapter 3. We see 1 Corinthians 3. God is manifest, the agape of God. And, and so we see that love manifests in giving. And God so loved that He gave. And God has always had that demeanor of wanting to give to mankind. He has wanted fellowship and He's wanted a family. He's wanted a connection with mankind. And so to have a free will, understand this. Love cannot, this is important. Love cannot exist outside of free will. It has to be a choice to love somebody for love to have value. If, if, if somebody didn't have an, a, a choice and they, they were just an android, they were just a, they were just a robot, and they, th- then they, there wouldn't be a choice. It, would make, it wouldn't make the, 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 there wouldn't be any value in the relationship. For, for God to have a relationship with man, he had to give them dominion and give them a free will. And then they had an opportunity and did fellowship with God in the garden. And they had this beautiful communion of, 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 of fellowship that existed. So we know the story. Um, Adam and Eve eat of the, the single tree in the garden. They broke the, the one single rule that God gave. And here we see that in this that, that the mankind and the world w- was fallen. We, be- we live in this fallen state um, of, of, of man having, not, having mistrusted God, having listened to the lies of the serpent, of, of Satan, and, God, and now man has now set on a path of mistrusting God's intentions. Now man doesn't trust whether God is. Now, so so this, is, this is important to understand. Free will is up to us. Now people, um, even some denominations don't basically believe in free will and that surprises me because you know you can ask anybody about free will and they they like well uh, you know obviously does God make you for example drive the speed limit? Does he make you pay your taxes? God commands people to repent. Do everybody repent? Does everybody repent? God wants every man, it says in Peter, that he says he wants every man to be saved. Does everybody accept the free gift of salvation? The answer is obviously no. We see right from the word God's desire for men when Adam and Eve, he didn't desire for them to eat from the tree. He told them not to, yet they went. They used their free will against it and chose the garden. Cain took a rock and killed his brother. That is, that is an, a demonstration. So we see that, that oh, since the beginning there has been free will. So the world is a fallen world. There are people, we are, we are part of the system that we can be subject to the free will of others. If there is a drunk driver driving down the road and, or somebody who chooses to, to, to drink and drive and he, he chose with his free will to break the laws, get in a car and get behind the steering wheel and drive and he crashes into your, your car or somebody, some loved one's car and creates some kind of a tragedy, either death or, or, or pain or hurt, that was not God's will. That was a man's free will who decided to do that. Do you see that? I hope you do, because this is such an important piece to understand that God's will for us hasn't changed. 
yet we can submit, we can choose to surrender our will to God. But that is not a once and for all time. Even if you get born again, you and I know, I know, at least maybe if you're, you're, you may live a little holier than I, but I've certainly not adhered to every every law and every commandment and and I, I have this perfect life of course I, I haven't I've argued with my wife I've I've done things that are that I shouldn't have done I've I've been selfish I've been self-centered I've I, I've I, the Lord's led me to do something and I've chosen not to do it we the list goes on and on I, I choose to, however if I want to walk in his paths and walk in his ways those become an ongoing day-to-day -day choice now our choices both have consequences, good and bad. If we follow God's way, we get to experience what God wants us to experience. But if we choose not to, uh, then we do not get to get to enjoy and to participate in this. There's another scripture that I, I wanted to read to you in 1 John um, chapter 5, verse 19. Listen to this. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. What? Yes. The whole world is under the control of the evil one. So here, it doesn't say God is in control. In fact, listen to the temptation of Jesus. You probably know this story. Just after Jesus um, had the Holy Spirit come on him at the baptism of the river where John, he goes into the wilderness for 40 days and he has three temptations. Satan comes to him after 40 days. He's, he's super hungry. He tests him with turning stones into bread. And, and then he, then he says, then, and he tests him with another. One of the te temptations, notice one of the temptations, Satan says to him, listen, if you will bow down and worship me, he says, I will give you all the kingdoms. He shows him the kingdoms of the world and he shows Jesus the kingdoms of the earth. And he says, if you just bow down and worship me, I'll give you these kingdoms. Now, Jesus didn't say, <laughs> they're my kingdoms. They were it was a temptation. They were Satan's to give. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been a temptation. If you don't like broccoli, you can't, I, I can't if you don't like broccoli, or I, don't, I do like broccoli, but if you didn't like broccoli like a lot of kids don't, they, you can't tempt a kid to eat broccoli because, no, maybe you can tempt him with ice cream, right? But this is the, this is the same basic principle. We see that God has created a, a, a world that has been set in motion. And this does have a sort of a, a, a time on it. This world is going to end. We, we see that in Scripture. There will be a time where this world will be rolled up like a map and the end of the times will come. But until that time, we, we believers get to walk in His ways. We get to either listen to the influence of the evil one. There, the, at first John talks about the, the spirit of Antichrist. Even back in John's day, the Apostle John, he says that the spirit of Antichrist, which now is, the spirit of Antichrist is alive and well. We, we can see it in, 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 in our governments and, and in governments across the world. People can listen to the spirit of Antichrist. They can listen to the evil one. They can listen and follow His, uh, can listen, follow his agenda. Or they can choose to follow God's way. They can pick up their Bibles, learn about God's wills and intentions for their life, and follow after that. It is a free will choice. So understand this. If you've had a tragedy happen to you, I believe that God wants to meet you at there. He is a God of love. He wants to meet you. He wants to minister to you. He, there, there is a way that He wants to reach you through other believers and, and to Him Himself He wants to minister to you. But please do not believe that He is the one that killed your loved one. He is the one that maimed or hurt you. That is not the truth. God is not in control. In fact, the Bible says of these things, as I often say, you can see the perfect character of God in His names. He has revealed His characters through His names. And you, you, you may know some the seven big uh, covenant names of God, but there's many, many, many more. But, but here we see this, this God. He is Jehovah Rophe, the God that heals us. He is Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. He is Jehovah uh, Rohi, the God that leads us. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, etc., etc. You see, God is that. That is, not, that is not something He chooses to do or not do. That is His nature. It is His character. He is love. He is healing. When you go to God, He is healing. There is nothing but a healing in Him. He isn't handing out sickness. And we see this in the manifestation of Jesus. Jesus is the exact, it tells us in Colossians 1 and in Hebrews 1, that He is the exact representation of God. He said to Philip, Philip, haven't you seen, if you, don't you know that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? He is, Jesus, where do you see Jesus making anybody sick? No, 
Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about healing all oppressed, healing the sick, healing all oppressed of the devil, right? So understand that God absolutely wants you well. John 10, 10 says that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come, says Jesus, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. God loves you but you have a free will choice. How you will respond to him? Will you choose to hear him? Will you choose to respond? Will you choose to hear his word? Will you choose to walk in his ways or not? He has a way. His ways are good. David said it this way in Psalm 119, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There is so much in Proverbs and about talking about following, following God's ways upon these paths are life. But if we choose, not to walk in them we would we don't get to experience them choice we get to listen to it or we don't that's as really as simple as it is to benefit this these are famous words that you may remember or know from joshua in verse 14 of chapter 24 he says this now therefore fear the lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in egypt and serve the lord and if it is evil in your eyes to serve the lord choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in the land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What is your choice? Isn't that powerful? You see, it is up to you. You have power. Don't let people take that power away from you. Don't take that power away from yourself by saying it's God or it's the devil. You have power. God loves you, what are you going to do with that powerful free choice, that free will choice?